Hello all. In continuation to series What's New in 2023 Release Wave 1, today we will talk about AL Explorer and AL Home, which is part of Agile Studio Code for Business Central Extensions. Hi, this is Saurabh Dhani signing in, and let's get dive into it. So what is AL Explorer and AL Home? So with the introduction of AL Explorer, it will eliminate the need of these third-party tools that we were using, and thank you for all those third-party tools which helped us all these years to make our life easier, like Object Designer, like AZAL Extension, and others, if I'm forgetting some of those. But with the AL Explorer, Microsoft is bringing a tool in hands of developers and also consultants in general, which will allow them to explore, navigate objects which are part of Business Central, and get details about it, see what they are dependent on, what are their extensions, uh, which interfaces NMs are required, uh, what is the right way to subscribe to an event. It's just the first version, and I'm hoping that Microsoft will keep enhancing this. So let's dive into it, and let's see what it is. So let me open my Visual Studio Code, which is here. And what you need to do now is search for AL Explorer. So as soon as you search for AL Explorer, you see a window like this on your screen. What this is, let's dive in on the screen. The first one on the right hand side is list down the projects that you are in. If you have multiple projects in your workspace, you will see multiple of them here. Then the modules will show you all the modules that you have taken a dependency on or the current objects that you have in your project or workspace. You can filter out modules from here, like you would like to see everything which are part of any dependency, all the objects that you have in this current app, and so on and so forth. Or if you would like to see bookmarked, what is bookmarked? Bookmarked is something where you can say, oh, I'm currently working on these kind of objects, so I'll be trying to filter out that I just need to look at these objects, so I can do that, and I can remove the bookmark or add the bookmark as needed. What is next? The source, which is current project, whatever is in the current project. There's a page extension, there's a report. Workspace, if there are multiple projects in your workspace, you will be able to see all the objects related to that workspace. The modules will list down any apps that you are taking dependency on. I just have dependency on Microsoft app. So this is base app, system and system application app. You can filter on those. As you keep on filtering on those, you'll see that this list kind of grows and uh, reduces based on it. And that's where the group by comes into the picture. So what happens? Let's change it to all so that I see everything. The group by helps you to have a better readability on objects that you're looking at. Uh, you would like to look at based on object type as the traditional object designer did all these years. Then switch it to type and it'll group everything based on object type. You can see code units here. You can see, uh, let me short it based on subtype. Okay, not that. If you would like to see all the tables, there are 1875 tables in the whole module that we have. And you can see all the tables, which extension they are part of. And what is the table name? What is the table caption? What is the table ID also? If it is temporary, it is also listed here. And if you don't know about temporary tables, uh, not just the temporary property, if you are from NAV, there are new tables which are tagged as temporary. We can talk about it someday. Just drop me a comment about it. So you can see all the details about your objects here. You can either group them by type or by modules. What does the module mean? Based on the different apps that they are part of. So the system app is still the biggest app with 7,647 objects for Business Central 2022. What else we have? A related table. This is interesting where Microsoft is kind of grouping the table based on uh, the areas that they are built on. Let's see if I find something which is relatable. So let's come down here and try to see do we find anything. Oh, let's see contact. What's in there? This for the contact, there are some pages, and there's a code unit, which is related to contact. 
So if you know the area that you're working on and you're looking for the related table, you can directly come in here and group this by uh, related table and you'll be able to see all the tables that are there in that area. Like sales ship and herald. It says seven table, that'll be interesting. Seven objects, sorry. The header table, uh, the line table, I guess. No, no line table. Uh, the pages, the code units, and some of it. It's a pretty good start at this point, I guess. It'll get better, I'm hoping, as we move forward into it. What is the path? The path is how Microsoft groups these objects in the system in the base app. And I don't want to get into detail and open it, but there are logical grouping inside the app where different objects are placed in different folders. So if I'm looking for something on Word warehouse management and trying to customize it, I can just open this and it'll show me all the objects which are part of this particular area. Okay, so we have seen about the group by path. Now, what about the search? Now this is a search that you can utilize. You can still do it on name, like customer, and anything, any object which will have a name of customer will start listing here. If you are a traditional NAV developer who remembers the object ID because we are cooler, then you can just type in 21 and you know that it's cust ledger entry or a customer card page. So it's easier to navigate and all. What else on the screen? That's not it. If you would like to see, let's say, table 18, which is customer table, and if it's a runnable object, you can directly click on run and it'll go ahead and run that page on your business center client. So let's try doing a run on table 18 and see what happens. You choose the environment if you have multiple uh, configurations and I did choose that. Now I will try to run the table 18 on my browser. In the same way, you can run a page. You can, I'm pretty sure you cannot run an enum or a code unit, but you can surely run a table page uh, report. I doubt that you can run a query or an XML port should be, huh? XML port are also not runnable. Nice. What about queries? Let's look at it. Query. Can I do that? Those are runnable. So you can run the queries directly from here also. So once it is here, it did run the page. Did I say page or did I set customer table? Let me try running. Mm, 21 customer ledger entry let's run it oh because there was a page associated to it so let me try some simple page let's say page number three payment dumps let's run it on cloud sandbox and it should run that table so if you see here on the url it says table three so it is actually trying to run the table three, but if there is an associated page attached to it, that will run, which in this case, there is a page. So it's not running, it did run the table this time. Okay, so it did run the table and that you can see, if you directly run a page, you can do that. What else? Source, if you would like to see the source code and if it is accessible by the app provider. Now, why I'm saying this, that if you're working with an ISV who did not allow you to see the source code, you'll not be able to. So remember that. But like for Microsoft app, you can always get into majority of objects, I would say, where the source code is accessible. So you'll be able to navigate to the source code directly from here, from the AL Explorer. And you can close that once you're done and remove the filter and pick out another object that you would like to see. So let's see what else we can see the code for. So if I look on the code units and I would like to see what is in this code unit, I can directly go into it and see what it is. So that makes it simpler. What else? You have a hard time finding events? Here in the AL Explorer, you have a way to see all the events which are available in your extensions that you are either taking dependency on or in your extension all these are placed here and if you just want to if you're not sure how what is the right way to um, subscribe to an event there's a button to call subscribe as soon as you click on subscribe 
the code gets copied into the clip clipboard and you can just go ahead and add let's say a code unit test.al and do it a code unit and then uh, let's say and then just paste it here and it does copy everything in the right format that it is needed to to subscribe to that event i was having a hard time to do a filtration on this uh, because i was looking forward to see oh can i filter on all the events that are on table 18 which does not seems to make sense but it should be hopefully microsoft does that in future that in here i can see what table it is referring to or what object it is referring to and then filter or short that list based on that so if i do by type i can oh if i do by type i can do that but still okay i can if i do short by object name i should be able to can i search for customer now yes i can so now if i know that i'm looking for customer I can just come here and see okay this might make sense that on after validate city i want to do something i can subscribe to it come back to my code unit and just directly paste it that makes my life more easier what is apis in here it will list down all the apis that are available in the apps that you are working with or that you have dependency on uh, you'll see all the API pages and you might be thinking why there's a list is pretty small The API's that you consume are actually part of a separate app called API v1 and v2 Which are not part of the base app and I don't have a dependency at this point uh, To those extensions if I'll have a dependency. I'm pretty sure they will be populated here What I can do from here again if I have that I can also see the source code of that API page okay last but not least extensible enum now this list might look a little bit small but i guess the title of this could have been better these are enums which are related to your interfaces so all these enums are used somewhere in interfaces and they are extensible so if i'm doing something on let's say purchase invoice posting I can see the source code and I can see that it is implementing the invoice posting interface which was introduced I guess two version ago if I'm not wrong so if I have to extend it I know that this uh, enum is utilized in the invoice posting in, uh, interface and I can just extend it by looking at it here so when you look at extensible enum don't get confused that it will show you all the enums that are in the system and only show you enums which are related to interfaces and that you can extend only if there are others which you cannot extend then you will not see them here so that's all in the AL Explorer let's talk about the another thing that we have in this video which is the AL Home now what is AL Home let's search for AL Home as soon as you open AL Home this is the new AL Home startup page that introduces a new communication channel between Microsoft and developers. Uh, the idea here that Microsoft will kind of use this area in your Visual Studio Code to update you as a developer what they are working on, uh, what are the learning content, what are the different status, urgent info and all those things will be available here. I'll highly encourage you to search for this page in your Visual Studio Code and then show it at startup mark that as true so anytime you open visual studio code you always see whatever the latest news from microsoft for you as a developer so i'm super excited with it what kind of news we get from microsoft about it it's not yet kind of started it just talks about the al explorer at this moment but i'm pretty sure that going forward it'll show us the new things that we spend hours into finding things in the product so hopefully that makes sense so before we leave let's do what we do every time we did talk about two things one is AL Explorer which gives me a way to view search filter objects in my workspace uh, based on my dependencies and the extension that I'm working on 
if there is a way uh, to get to the source code based on the app policies that I'm subscribing to uh, I'll be able to see the source code I can also run the runnable objects directly from AL Explorer I can bookmark objects that I'm currently working on and that kind of removes the clutter and keep the list shorter I can see events which are available in those apps and also have a button to copy the subscriber code into it I can see APIs which are part of those apps and also NMs which are related to interface and at the end we did talk about briefly about AL home which is the new startup landing page for AL developers in Visual Studio Code so hope you learned something new today if you did please do share this video if you are new to this channel please do subscribe to this channel it helps us to understand uh, do, you, do you like our com content or not if you have any questions or any uh, idea about the next article that you would like to see here or next video that you like add that into the comment I religiously follow those comments and try to do as much as I can for the community so this is sort of Dhani signing out and I'll see you in the next video about the next feature or next thing in Business Central have a great day